In this case, they think you're going to Chicago. And all of your friends think you're going to Alaska. But only you know your real destination, the desert. Coming up, your journey under the radar has just begun. But you're not safe yet. Just because you're on the move doesn't mean you're not being watched. We live in a world where our every action is monitored, online and in real life. Surveillance cameras, credit checks, airport security, baggage searches, hackers, wiretaps, identity theft. But what would you do to make it stop? To get rid of all the things that open you up to snooping, spying, and surveillance. Our journey under the radar continues. The first two days are critical. If you can make it 48 hours into your trip, the odds of someone finding you are cut in half. As darkness gives way to light, you'll rely on your cleverness to stay one step ahead. You're on the road to your new identity. Goes without saying, you've already gotten rid of the old ride. That luxury car that you used to own, that's finished. The corporate lifestyle, that's over too. Because what you're doing right now is you're effectively breaking patterns. Who would have ever expected you to be driving around in a family car? But even with the relative freedom and anonymity offered by your personal vehicle, your car can still sell you out. First thing to watch out for, your electronic toll pass. Toll passes are used by millions of commuters every day, tracking your car whenever it passes through toll roads, pay bridges, and congestion zones in certain cities. These passes rely on radio frequency identification, or RFID, to work. Your vehicle is equipped with a passive chip that's read when it passes the toll road scanning antenna. Each chip sends out a unique signal. Every time you get scanned, you get billed, creating a precise map of your route. If someone got a hold of these records, it wouldn't be too difficult to work out where you're going. In the 21st century, RFID chips are everywhere. The Department of Defense uses them to trace military supplies. While reports have circulated that the European Central Bank has considered embedding chips in euros to protect against counterfeiting. And yes, even your best friend may have one under his skin, so he doesn't get lost. So how do you inhibit the tracking device in your car? The solution is simple. You're going to need to get rid of your easy pass. You're going to have to stay away from the interstates. They're teeming with cameras. And anyone who wanted to tap into that network of cameras, they'd be able to track you down easily. Even if you don't have a toll pass in your vehicle, you may be harboring another snitch that gives away your location. The GPS installed in your car. 24 hours a day, this communicates with a satellite network, creating an exact record of your location. But that's not the scary part. If your GPS has an emergency call feature, it also has a microphone. And that mic can be turned on at any time, whether you're aware of it or not. That's right. Your car can listen to you. The solution, remove any GPS devices embedded in your vehicle. Even then, there's still something on your car that can rat you out. And it's surprisingly low-tech. You're going to have to make sure that you get a vehicle with clean tires. Now, I'm not talking about dirt. I'm talking about the type of tire that does not have an RFID chip embedded inside. Now, you have a number of manufacturers that are placing them there. And what this does is it converts this tire into a literal rolling tracking device. Each tire contains a unique ID that, if scanned, reveals your vehicle identification number and point of purchase. Future tires may have even more powerful chips that could transmit your actual location in real time. You must get a vehicle without RFID chips embedded in the tires. So your car is clean, but you're still vulnerable to being tracked, traced, and monitored during your journey. Sometimes it's the simplest of things that can give you away. You've been on the go for several hours and you gotta eat. If you frequented certain restaurants, you're gonna avoid them at all costs. 
It's not just where you eat, but what you eat. Because Big Brother even knows your dietary habits. How? Remember when you booked an airline ticket five years ago? When you did, you filled out your food preferences without a second thought. If I were trying to get information on you, I'd call the airline's customer service, pretend I was you, and have them check your preferences. For example, if I see that you're vegetarian, I'll just scope out places that serve vegetarian food. So from now on, you're a red-blooded carnivore. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, table for one, please. For one? Yeah. This one? Okay, this one. This is your basic sit-down coffee shop. Looks like a non-chain restaurant, and you've never eaten here. Here we go. Thank you. You've kept your hat and sunglasses on to protect you from surveillance cameras. That should be okay, right? Not quite. You've left behind a calling card, your fingerprints. An easy target for anyone with a BPAC. A BPAC is a portable unit that instantaneously analyzes biological metrics to authenticate someone's identity. It can measure all sorts of characteristics, from eye blood vessel patterns to voice recognition. This information is entered into a national database that includes the fingerprints of more than 7 million Americans, including all federal employees and those in high-level security jobs. Now here's the worrisome part. Anyone can buy a BPAC. If your fingerprints are in the database and someone hacks into that system with a BPAC, it will be game, set, match. So, how do you eat without a trace? A better alternative is to buy everything in disposable containers. The key word, disposable. The spicy Texas chili leaves. And instead of that table for one, uh, that'll be it for me. You're gonna take your spicy beef chili to go. You're about to spend your first night out on the road. You're not completely dropping off of the grid. You're basically living on the fringes of it. And you gotta maintain some sort of comfort as you get yourself prepared for your new life. So on your first night out, you are going to spend it inside a motel. How you doing? I need to rent a room. Would you be paying cash or credit? Cash. Remember, you're no ordinary motel guest. You'll want to cover your tracks by limiting your trail of DNA. Gloves are too suspicious. You'll want to use them sparingly. Regular old alcohol wipes, they'll do just fine. You're never going to want to enter any room or space that you're going to be in for an extended period of time without one of these. It's a wireless bug detector. And you can use this to scan through your room if there are any electronic devices or bugs are planted inside. This can even check for cameras. Them usually embedded in places that have a wide field of view of your room, like a picture frame. Devices like this one are also called electromagnetic frequency detectors. EMF detectors will find any gadgets emitting radio waves within a wide range of frequencies, which includes cell and cordless phones, hidden cameras, even baby monitors. 